Welcome to a walkthrough of the contract used for the Swedish Land Registry blockchain project Phase 3. Phase 3 ended with a demo at Epicenter in Stockholm. Seven participants, including buyer and seller, participated in a demonstration of a smart contract for the transfer of ownership of a property. Chromaway's smart contract technology is called Splix. The contract is loaded from the blockchain and runs on the participants' mobile phones and computers. It synchronizes its state via messages in its own dedicated contract channel on the blockchain. The contract is specified in a safe and powerful language. Esplex is general purpose and the contracts can easily be made for many types of business workflows. It can be paired with any ID system and participants can also use different ID systems, for example in case of international business workflows. The contract used in this case has 12 fields and 12 actions to drive the property transfer to conclusion in a safe and efficient way. Here follows a walkthrough. So here is the contract. Uh, seven tabs have been opened. One for each contract participant. That's the seller tab. That's the seller's bank tab. The buyer's bank tab. The buyer's tab. The land registry and rightmost we have the inspector role. And here you can see these roles in the smart contract code. We're currently on the broker tab, so let's log him in. And we're going to make a shortcut here, so we're actually going to log him in without the tele-ID system. Otherwise I would have needed to have seven phones here. And uh, there's he associates his public key with his identity, and that's a mock signing in this case. It's now registered on the blockchain. And it's now time to log in the other ones. And we're going to speed this up a little bit so we don't have to wait for all this. So speed it up a little bit. Logging in the seller, the seller's bank, the buyer's bank, the buyer, the land registry, and finally the inspector role. Now let's go back to, uh, and here we have them, inspector logged in, land registry logged in, and these tabs are all separate, they communicate through the blockchain with one another. These could be on different mobile phones or workstations. And now we create the broker tab, create a new contract, the broker has the right to do so. Uh, he registers himself as the creator of the contract and will submit that and it's created successfully. Now he can invite the parties to the contract. First we have the inspector presenter role. Let's find him on the certificate server where he's registered himself or herself. We set that and we're going to speed this up a little bit as well. So seller, buyer, buyer's bank, seller's bank and the land registry. So they're all now getting to be invited to participate in this contract. And that was included in the blockchain and they all get notified now. So if we continue on the broker tab they have the first action to do that is to fill out some initial fields. What is it we're agreeing on? Property ID, address, county of property and there's the code as you can see for this. Some fields are already filled out. We have a message chain, already the things that we have started the contract with, the init and the invite of participants. Here is the detached contract. This is a special thing that we add for courts to rule on if they need. We'll talk more about that later. Now let's fill out the information as start with a date. And let's take the 1st of February. I think that could be a good, good one when you see this video that will already be in the past and uh, let's speed up the process for the other fields and let's register that on the blockchain. 
Now there's an opportunity to add some extra documentation also by by the broker. And that could be anything. That's free form. Um, inspection protocols, the state of the property and things like that. And the broker supplies that and that's a needs to be co-signed by the buyer and the seller that they agree on this and they will also agree of course on the data fields already entered into the contract and we're waiting for us to perform an action so we need to go to the buyer tab and the seller tab so here we have the seller tab and there's a multi-signature action waiting and that's signing of information and you can see in the contract code that this is a multi-sign signatures seller and buyer and there we have the document and they can view the documentation uh, that has been uploaded and that's on the blockchain and they know that of course so this is information the document entered onto the blockchain you can take a look at it and if the seller decides yeah I agree with this they can co-sign it so they scroll up again and they co-sign it and now it's time to switch to the buyer tab and again they scroll down and they look at the document that's already on the blockchain and says yeah this is what I agreed on I, I, I will sign for this being part of the agreement with the seller So signing there and that concludes the multi-signature action that's, this is also gets logged onto the blockchain now it's time for the promissory note and uh, the participant that is supposed to um, enter that is um, let's see here it's the buyer's bank and they actually upload a PDF in this case that is only shared with the buyer so you can have information entered into this contract workflow that's only visible to some participants the other participants can only see that an agreement has been made between two or more parties now the buyer needs to to um, uh, sign the promissory note and they do that there they could also of course view it but now we'll just sign it now it's time for the settlement note Mm, that is actually entered by the broker so the broker uploads the settlement note and that gets signed by the seller and you should of course inspect it first to make sure it's he knows what he's, he or she signs now it's time for the buyer's bank to pay and the way the workflow is done here the buyer will tell the buyer's bank that I'm happy for you to pay now and that's what's happening here and now we'll switch over to the buyer bank tab and the buyer bank tab now vouches for that payment will be made or has been made uh, we're not having an on-chain currency here because they're very volatile in value maybe with stable coins we don't have to do it like that anymore now it's time to sign the detached contract that is an export from the blockchain into a European Union approved format in this case called ASIC and that is so that the courts also can uh, easier rule on things and not having to be confronted directly with the blockchain but they also have this opportunity to, to work on something that there is already quite some legal precedent for in the European Union and now at the land registry tab and we're going for the contract concluded state the lender is still look through the contract and make sure everything has been uh, filled out correctly and then they award the title to the buyer and now we can inspect the fields all the fields being filled out here's the message chain that together has made up the contract workflow as you can see the green check mark by each one that it was approved correctly signed and here we have the uh, detached contract uh, with the legal text and also actually link back into um, the blockchain and it's now possible to download the signed contracts if one wants to and that concludes the contract